governor's chair is in studio with us. And Please let Coco, me say his name. Coco had a lot of fun um, trying to say his name correctly. Go ahead. I got it. Sri Tanada. Perfect. You did a great job. Yes, thank you. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, uh, I, I call you the mad scientist. <laughs> I know you're not a mad scientist. But, but I'm you, a scientist. You are a scientist. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, I want to say nuclear. You're a nuclear scientist? No, I, I, I am a chemist. Chemist. Mm -hmm. A bachelor's, a master's, and a PhD in chemistry. Oh, uh, you, you have okay. a fascinating background. Tell, tell us a little bit about your, your um, family, your mom and dad <clears throat> back in India. Well, I, you know, I grew up uh, in a very small, like a poor family. My four sisters, a brother. My father was forced to retire uh, from the government service with very little pension, and the family fell into poverty. And I, uh, as of, at 14, started working as a janitor <coughs> and uh, trying to help the family. And education, John, education was the ladder for my success. Yes. And the state, you know, I got a helping hand from the state because the state paid, because of my financial status, I was able to get free education. Mm -hmm. So I got a bachelor's, a master's with no loans. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, heard about the United States and I wanted to come here and uh, come to this great country. So um, there's a rumor I came to United States with $20 in my pocket, but actually that's not true. I had $16 and I had a couple... <laughs> you had 16 Okay. I had, I had a couple beers on the plane. There you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Jay. And they told me, John, it's going to be cold in America in February. Uh -huh. So when it's cold, we wear a sweater. And uh, I, <laughs> those were the days you can't go to Google and see. No, you can't yes. see that. Yes. <laughs> so I go land in New York at minus 10 degrees. Whoa. Freezing. Then I come to Akron, Ohio. Akron, that, now wait a minute. <laughs> wait. Oh, oh, we, okay, we, we, we in Ohio, we, that's where Mason is originally yeah, from. Yeah. <laughs> we, we continue to, 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 all the stars come out of Akron. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Ron James. Right. And, and, and now could be the possible next governor of the state of Michigan. Wow. <laughs> well, so I got, to, uh, so, uh, you know, the, again, the state, uh, the university paid for my education because they gave me a teaching job. So I had to teach the undergraduate labs and only nine months was the lab teaching. Mm. Okay. And they gave me $300 per month. So I take $75 out of that, send it home so my family can put food on the table. Yeah. And then I live in the two hundred twenty-five dollars, and oh, summer, no. and yeah, and then summer comes, and there is no salary, nothing. So I can't keep my apartment. So I, I said, I figured it out. I had a car I had bought for two hundred dollars, uh, no insurance. So I started sleeping. Then in no the insurance part. Let me see. Let's say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was, you know, I, I was a bad driver, <laughs> and no. no, and no insurance. Yeah. It was. You sound like all of us. Right in. Right in. It was. It was a ter terrifying experience, yeah. and then the, and it's got it getting too hot in the car. So I said, I figured out I can go in the chemistry building and there is a seminar room I can sleep That's on. Right. And I had a sleeping bag and I could just sleep on the floor. There you go. And nobody would know. And one day I was working late in the chemistry lab. I slept at 4 a.m. By the time I couldn't wake up the normal time. And here comes, walks in the professor, the Ooh. dean. Yeah. They all had yeah. a big important meeting and here Ooh. I am sleeping on the floor. Oh. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so I was embarrassed and I put all my stuff away and go away. And I was just worried what are they going to do when they're sleeping back in the car. And then two years later, they gave me an award, an outstanding teaching assistant. And, oh. and, the, dean, the, dean made, yeah. <laughs> and, and the dean made a speech and he said, Shri is very dedicated. He works very hard. He works so hard that many a nights he's known to sleep. <laughs> sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Sleep in the building. <laughs> that is great. And then, then uh, I couldn't get, I sent 150 applications for a job, couldn't get a job. You know, those were the days, 17% interest rates, remember? Yes. Back, uh, you know, 80, 80, 82. Mm -hmm. And uh, so finally, I was uh, in Midland, Michigan at a, a chemistry meeting, and I was uh, telling about my PhD research. And there's a little guy in the back who was just asking me all these tough questions. And in the end, he says, do you have a job? And I said, no. He said, come join me. And he was the professor of 
chemistry department, MD wow. Curtis at uh, University of Michigan. Mm. Wow. So Michigan gave me my first break, first real job. And I, the only question was, will my uh, Impala the, will make it from... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, Chevy, you had yeah. an Impala. Impala. That was, wow. I, I bought it for $200. That's right, you had a hoopty. Uh, yeah, and then it came... Uh, <laughs> no insurance. <laughs> no insurance. Who you sound like this? And, uh, and, no you know, and you know, the, the cars had a fuel pipe, and that started leaking. I went to the service station. They said it's going to cost me $200 to fix it. And I said, that's the cost of the car. I can <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I go to the lab. I go to the lab and I put a little plastic tube and I put it in there. <laughs> and it works. Wait a minute. You're a chemist and a scientist. So, yeah. You know what to do. This sounds yeah. like an episode of Big Bang. Theory. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and so I then I bring the car to uh, so the the nice thing about it is that all of my worldly possessions fit perfectly in the trunk of the car mm -hmm. and I still have room left in it. Yeah. <laughs> so so the car makes it, wasn't it very much. The car makes it to Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I started working again. The very first day I get a ticket and it wipes out my half of my net worth. I got a ticket for thirty five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you went h how many years between getting uh, a real job? Uh, well, the three and a half years at Akron, then two years at the University of Michigan as a scientist, and then I got a job out of state uh, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So I left the state in eighty four. Became I worked as a chemist for about six years, and then I wanted to be on my own, and I found a little business, three-person business that did chemical testing, chemical analysis. They analyzed water for lead, they analyzed soil for chemicals, okay. and then I bought that company for seventy-five thousand dollars. I got a loan from the bank. I had three thousand on my credit card, so I put that in there. So you can see, I, my my daddy didn't give me fourteen million dollars to start, right, to start my business. That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I started the business, a three-person business, and I grew it. Mm. And as I was growing the business, uh, in, in six years, my boys were four and eight years old, about uh, grew the business from $150,000 annually revenue to about two million, about wow. uh, grew jobs to about 20. And you know, uh, my wife, the boy, uh, boy's mother, uh, died. Uh, she was suffering from mental illness, and she died. And I had to take care of the boys as a single father. Ooh. Until I got remarried, and so the boys were four and six, year, four and eight years old, and I had to deal with my sorrow, my grief, and I had to deal with theirs. And uh, but I'm proud of them. They, you know, they grew up. They graduate from Ross Business School at the University of Michigan, yeah. and now they're entrepreneurs creating jobs. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and That's a good <clears throat> family story. Yeah. So do you share your story with your sons? I mean, yes, I do. Well? Yes, I do. And now I have a grandson who is 15 months old. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> His name is Kai, K-A-I. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's my... Uh, after all the whole long day of campaigning, I come to come home and I guess see his video or talk to him on Skype. Yeah, oh, that's and amazing. I, and it it is such a relief, you know. It's a great blessing. It is a great blessing, and uh, so uh, th then uh, the business kept growing, and in uh, by before the recession, the business had grown to a valuation of about two hundred million, four hundred and fifty employees, all in America, and not a single job outsourced. And then wow. came, and then came the recession, and in the recession, many of my clients were small little companies, and they went belly up. Yeah. And uh, the bank, Bank of America, who got all these federal subsidiaries because they were too big to fail, mm -hmm. had no trouble closing on my business. Jeez. And they uh, sold some of the business, closed some of it down, collected more money than I owed them. Mm. And they kept the extra money as the late fees and penalties. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a cardboard box and said, Mr. Tanada, if you want to take some of your personal stuff, feel free to. And I start, so I put my children's pictures in my box, and I'm walking out, I see this award that I had won, Entrepreneur of the Year from Ernst & Young. So I asked them, and they let me take that thing, and I said, I'm going to win another one of these uh, someday. And I come home, and we learned that in three weeks, they're going to foreclose on our home, on the same bank, because they owned everything right. that, I, that I owned. They did. So I, uh, my wife and I, all day we work hard and put our clothes and our personal stuff in the uh, budget rental truck and leave our home for the last time. Uh, and we start driving at 6 p.m. And we're driving to Ann Arbor, Michigan now. And uh, so we reach Ann Arbor at 3 a.m. 
uh, put our stuff in a rental place. Next day, I found a little rental space that used to be a lab and also had gone out of business in the recession. I buy that. This is in September of 2010. And then uh, I grew that business. And in 2016, I had 50 jobs I have created in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, wow. Same thing. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And I, I yes, yes. Yes. We're talking with Shereen Goddard. Okay. He's running for the governor's All right. seat here in Michigan and doing? telling us an incredible story about his beginnings and his hmm. journey. I'll continue. So now you're in Ann Arbor. You pick up this little company and you start to kick. I mean, uh, you I, to I, you know, yeah. I, I, when I started the company, I was 55 years old. And last, the six years from 2010 to 2016, I never worked harder in my life mm. because I had I didn't have much time left. I felt I need Come to on. really get this yes. thing done. And um, uh, so in 2016, I got that award. Entrepreneur of the Year award. You got it again. Yes. I got it again. He said he was, didn't he? Yes. Said he yes. Was. yes. And you know, I and my wife looked at each other and we said, we did good for our family. Yeah. You know, we achieved our American dream, but you know what? American dream is fading all over America. Come on. Yes. An American dream is fading in Michigan more so than any other place. Mm. Mm. And it, at that point, it made no sense for me to keep doing good for my family. And I decided, and my wife and I decided to just sell the business. So in end, yeah, in 2016, yeah. and now the business was really doing great. But in 2016, we sold the business. Um, then we took $1.5 million and gave it to all of my 50 employees. And the way I, we did Whoa. it, yeah, and the way we did it with not on their that. title, but their length of service. Mm. Oh my God. Mm. So, so, great so, blessing. So, great so, blessing. That's what I'm talking about. So, I'm so, sorry. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, Katie, yes. so, Katie, who was my administrative assistant, got the most money. She walked away with $107,000. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then I took a little more money and put it into my campaign and announced my candidacy for governor. Now, I was the fourth candidate to announce because. Yeah, I announced my candidacy in June the 7th, and by then already there were three other candidates. Yes. And so in November they did a poll, and I came in at 2% in the poll okay. with an error margin of plus or minus 4. Wow. <laughs> Not very good. Not good. Not very really good. They're <laughs> <laughs> not even great on the curve. Oh. Right. <laughs> and but, but all how things have changed. Things have changed. And then I started traveling everywhere. I've gone to about 48 of the 83 counties. I've met a lot of people. We put made some ads and put it, those on television because it's a big state and it's not possible to meet every person. Right. And I wanted to reach them out through television, through social media. We now have like 66,000 followers um, on our Facebook. How many? 66,000. 66,000 followers wow. on Facebook. Yeah, and that's more than any of the other candidates. And uh, and the recent poll came out, and that put me three percent ahead of uh, uh, the other candidate. So I am now in first place. Hey, at least, at least for this week. Yeah, <laughs> this week. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I'm sure it will change next week. And but I, I love the commercials. Thank you. I love wow. the transparency in the commercials. Mm. Thank you. Thank I, you. I, I love you. Just saying, this is my name, but I know you're gonna mess it up but it'll make you remember it, you yeah. have to say. Yeah. Mm. So oh, everybody that says this messes it up. Even even people are even texting me now like... Um, and you uh, pronounce it how? Shri Tanada. <laughs> Shri. And, and so on, and more commercials are coming. This week, okay. we are bringing out seven more. Okay. Shri, uh, why, why did you want to do this? Well, like I said, I want to give back. You know, uh, as an immigrant, I came here with a dream. And this country of ours and this state of ours has given me so much. The state has given me, look, when I lost everything, I came to Ann Arbor and made it again. Yeah. And nowhere else I could have done this. Sure. And I feel that a tremendous obligation. You know, I've been a US citizen since 1988, and this is my chance. And I have said that I want to devote the rest of my life to public service. I saw what happened in Flint. The state of Michigan poisoned its own citizens. The governor tried to run the state like a business, and this state is not a business. We are looking, dealing with people's lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just this, the whole Flint thing, this, the whole you know, feeding the big corporations, not taking care of people, 
all of that bothered me and I said, I'm going to set rest, spend the rest of my life uh, public service, fixing things. I'm a problem solver. That's right, I, baby. And I see yes. so many problems yes. in Michigan and the politicians are only going to give us lip service. They're not going to do what needs to be done. And I'm a doer and I'm going to go there and, um, you know, make things happen. I'm not just going to go there grandstanding and talking, but I'm going to go work with people and find good solutions. Think big and think about a future that's bigger and better than what we have today in Michigan. Well, ah. we're talking with Cherie Badana, yes, who um, is running for the governor's chair. Uh, I do want to say this in, in terms of people. You live in the hoods. Yes. You suffer like the worst. Yes. Mm -hmm. You pulled your bootstraps up, did the work, made yes. the money, <laughs> lost it, came back, yes. didn't blame anybody. Yes. But then, even at your pinnacle, you still took what you had and shared it with those who could not have done better. Yes. Um, <laughs> those are traits that people will be looking for uh, in, in a candidate. What do people say to you as you shake hands with them and ask what they would like to see from a governor? Yeah, first thing when I go and shake my hand, they say, I said, I'm Sri, and they said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a good, always a good thing. That's a good, you know, I have the highest name ID now, 65%. Wow. And my competitor is more around 40 some percent. So I have the highest name ID. The only person that have a higher name ID is Bill Shooty, who I'm going to beat. In the, in the, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, people are hurting. Uh, and, uh, you know, Snyder can go talk about the numbers and all that. But, you know, we pre-recession, we still haven't made up the jobs that we lost uh, in the recession. We're still about 300,000 jobs shy of it. Uh, people are hurting and uh, people are doing multiple jobs. We don't have enough skills. We, uh, you know, 65,000 skilled jobs are unfilled. Uh, you know, Amazon did not even take all the goodies they gave them because Amazon said, fix your education system. Yes. You don't have enough skilled people. Our education is at the bottom. That's right. The char charter yes. schools have, you know, the for-profit charter schools. You know, nobody should be profiting from public school dollars. We need to respect our teachers. We need to pay them well. We need to improve our education. We need to have a, a universal pre-K so that the young kids, uh, one to four-year-old kids can learn early so that they can do better in the third grade and fourth yes. grade math. Yes. You, know, you know, we got to give a f uh, the future to our children means we have to invest in them. That's and right. It, it all starts with education. I want to be the education governor. I want to take mm. this, our education to the top. Uh, and once we do that, and we, once we let people have skills, vocational skills, technical career skills, then people can get good paying jobs. Mm. I want to bring uh, a technical education, vocational skills in the middle schools and in high schools and have apprenticeship programs. And I want to expunge records and uh, you know, let people that have nonviolent uh, offenders uh, serve the society in another way. Come on. You know, not locking people up. You know, we just have, we spend so much money in locking people up, yes. $2.5 billion. Yes. If we could invest some of that money and give them the skills, then they can become the productive members of society and they don't have to go back into prison. Same way with crisis, op opioidic crisis. Yes. That's, that's not a law enforcement, it's a compassion issue oh. and it's, a, it's a, you know, counseling and mm. we need to shut down those pill mills and the pharmaceutical companies that are pushing those medicine on us. So we, this, we need compassion. Uh, you know, this government need compassion. Uh, you know, the, there's too much influence of big corporation, the billion dollar families on our politician, on our government, and that has corrupted our government. And we need to free that, and we need to free that by, and someone who is not beholden to the corporation, the special interest, can do that. And so, that's what I want to do. Come on. Read that and running for yes. the government. Yes. Of the great state of wow. Michigan. Wow. Yeah. Um, thank you for, for sharing some time yes. with us. Yes. Uh, you, uh, and, uh, you also have a book. Yes. But go ahead, Angie. That was just my question. I just want to know more about your book, The Blue Suitcase. Yes. yes. I, you know, I'm a very, uh, now our state is last in transparency and ethics. But, you know, I wrote this book with very honestly and transparently. So you see everything about me in this. I think the people of Michigan have a right to know who they are going to elect as their next leader. 
So you have a background blueprint, <laughs> a book that they can pick up. They don't have to ask the other person. Yeah. Wow. They yeah. can know for thyself. Yeah. yeah, and this is not a political book. It's just a book about my story. I'm just telling it like I would tell it to a friend. Sure. And so, uh, so you know who I am. Uh, you know how I have lived my life. And you know that how I'll work. You know, that's what I will work. I'm not much for photo apps and I'm not much for, you know, the publicity. I'm more there for to solve the problems. I'm a problem solver. You lived, you lived it all. How do you get the book? Uh, the book can be downloaded free of cost from my website. Uh, you can get an e-copy from the website www.shri2018.com. Now you, know, you got to spell it. S-H-R-I-S-H-R-I-2018. <laughs> yeah, so Shri, S-H-R-I 2018. That's the year we have to win govern, the governorship for the Democratic Party. So Shri2018.com. They can go there, look at my positions. I, I have the most information. Uh, on my website about than any other candidate. So uh, you can see my positions on, uh, you know, just about everything, education, health care. I want to bring Medicare for all. I want to cover more people under health care. Uh, I want to fix the education system. And then I want to invest in small businesses. I want to bring entrepreneurship. I am a serial entrepreneur. And I want to invest not in the big Googles and the Amazons don't need our money. Uh, and they don't have loyalty to our state. We need to invest in the little businesses, the small radio station or a printing press or a restaurant. We need to get, encourage people uh, everywhere, young people, including you know, in the inner cities. You know, we need to give people hope. And it's not about just begging for jobs. I want to make them inspired enough that they make their own future by starting small businesses and we'll give them micro loans and we'll have counseling and we'll have uh, business incubators where they can bring their ideas and grow it into a business. So we need to create that concept and our children are leaving after college and finding their American dream elsewhere. They need to stay right here and we're, we're going to reduce their college debt uh, if they stay in Michigan, work in Michigan. If they stay in Michigan, work or start a business and create jobs in Michigan, their college date will be forgiven even faster. Sheree oh, running thank for governor. All right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One final question <laughs> um, before we close the, the session out. How long have you been plotting to be governor? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the first the thought that came to my mind when the Flint disaster started happening. Okay. You know, and I said, you know, as a scientist, I could not bear to see that. Mm. And as a scientist, I'm line, uh, Embridge Line 5 under the Straits of Mackinac. And that's a ticking time bomb. If that pipeline is 60 plus years old, if it breaks, it will ruin the our Great Lakes. You can fix Flint? I, we, uh, we, I can fix Flint. We need to provide the, uh, the residents of Flint who got exposed a free medical care. Because some of that, I, as a scientist, I understand the effect of lead not only physical health but mental health and some of the mental health effects may not even be known for another 10 years mm -hmm. so we need to make a registry we need to make sure we we'll monitor their health and give them the help that they need because the state did wrong to these people mm -hmm. you can find all information all things sheree at sheree2018.com yes and, uh, you know, I'm so so thankful to you, John. I'm, I, I know you're a legend, and it was such an honor to be <laughs> <laughs> on your uh, show. <laughs> well, I was, you, you bring a fresh approach and a fresh absolutely. idea. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think we've seen the gamut of uh, political uh, people who, who want position, and a lot of them are missing one main ingredient, and that is compassion for the people. Absolutely, and honesty and a skill set, you know, yes. a problem-solving skill set that we need for, to take our state from this status quo into the next level. Beautiful. Thank you very much. John. Thank you. All thanks. Sweet Canada. Yeah. Yay, I got it right.